welcome to ILTV's Elections Arena. I'm Aaron Porras, and today in the ring, Prime Minister Netanyahu starts to reshuffle his cabinet again. Meanwhile, extreme actors on the left and the right are being targeted for disqualification, and the Blue and White Party is shifting its campaign ahead of third elections. Joining us to discuss is political advisor to the Likud Party, Yontan Oz, and columnist for, the Newsweek, for Newsweek and the editor of HistoryCentral.com, Mark Schulman. Apologize for that, uh, for that screw up there. But thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, now, to our first topic, once again, Prime Minister Netanyahu is reshuffling his ministerial cabinet as he's being forced to resign from his multiple ministerial portfolios. And I know what you're thinking, didn't you already do that? Well, yes and no, because several of his new recommendations have failed to materialize. Now, until recently, Netanyahu served in five different posts in addition to being prime minister, but he's been forced to give them up due to criminal indictments. So my first question, I'll turn to you, Yonatan. Why would Netanyahu insist on holding on to five, if you include prime ministership, six portfolios at a time? But what do you mean holding on? He was forced to, to withdraw them. I mean, He was forced he, to withdraw them, that's yeah, true. But why, I'm saying, why, why would he have wanted to hold on to all of those ministerial positions in the first place? Uh, can he, was he an effective minister in all those positions? Well, you know, let's not be naive. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he had his, in, his own interests with any of the portfolios. But let's not forget that he has, um, if he distributes it to many ministers, then he would be blamed for being uh, nominating too many ministers. He has this option. He has another option. One of the portfolios belongs to Chaim Katz, who was forced to withdraw, to withdraw because of his uh, upcoming... Uh, He's been giving immunity, though, as I understand. No, not yet. Yeah. Not, not yet. yet. Yeah, no, not yet. It has I to see. I think there's a fair chance that he will be given immunity because of the nature of um, his accusations. On the other hand, I don't think that he's... Um, I, it's not a key factor right now, what will happen with Chaim Katz, with all due respect. But this is one of the portfolios. Don't, don't so, I forget that. Look, it's always opinion. like a joke. I mean, the re reality is none of these ministers... The ministers in the Israeli government, through many, many years, by and large, don't do very much because most of them are incompetent at the jobs they do. Let's be realistic. These are strong them. words. Yes, it's a very strong words. I believe it's very strongly. Our system does not bring people with any expertise to the job they hold. They, they're musical chairs based on, um, based on what's more important. I mean, look, let's look at the example recently of, of Defense Minister Bennett. He was, by most accounts, a pretty good... a long history well, in, well, in, in well, the defense community, though. No, he doesn't. He was, he was a captain in the, he was a captain in the army. No, I want to go backwards a second. By most accounts, he was an incompetent education minister. He had learned the job. It takes a few years to learn a job like that. You know, any job, they say, it takes at least three years before you become good at a job. So what happened? Because of political reasons, etc., he was fired from that job, and then he was made minister of defense. And we could go through every single portfolio, and it's not Netanyahu's fault. It's a system that puts incompetent people in, in almost every single position, because no one has any knowledge in the, in the expertise in the area they're doing. Look, we put on solemn ministry communications. What does he know about communications? Zero. <laughs> I mean, I can go through the list one sure. after the other after the other. Very few ministers, and that's not, I mean, this is not an attack on the Likud government sure. per se. It goes all the way back. It's a well, system. Okay, so you're saying you disagree. Why? I disagree, because, uh, I mean, first, to the point, um, ministers in Israel, unlike other places maybe in the world, are not professional ministers, they are representatives of the public and they should supervise professional people. That's why he has his director general in every minister and his professional staff. Just a second. But on the other hand, when you, when you talk about Bennett and when, you, and when you talk about these new portfolios, don't forget something. We are now uh, during a, a very long period of uh, elections. During elections, the legal advisors of the ministries do not enable uh, the ministers to do anything, almost anything. So in many, in many aspects, with all respect to the previous offers and to this offer and to these nominations, they will not do well, anything because they're not able to do right so, now. So, rega so, so, so regardless so, of the fact that it's an interim government that by definition may, may be ineffective. It is not, by the way. Sure. The, the, by law, it's not considered an interim government. It's considered a due, duly okay. uh, formed government. Either, either way, right now, either way, it is, I think the it question is not has been enabled raised. legally to act in many, many aspects, civil so, aspects of the but, ministries, and it's because of the of the of this never-ending 
uh, election term. But let's, but let's put that aside. Mark just raised a good point. He's saying that people are being elect, uh, appointed or at least recommended for, the, for such appointments without necessarily having any qualifications. So here we have several new recommendations from, from Netanyahu. Bitan has given up his recommendation uh, to become agriculture minister because he has his own indictments on the way. Uh, potentially, that was not the reason. By the way, the reason he said he, said he was no, too no, it was no, too complicated no, and he no, was too no, busy. No, and he no, no. I mean, I'm I'm no uh, uh, I'm not the lawyer of David Bitan, and I'm not not his spokesperson. But but uh, if we look uh, frank frankly about what happened, Bitan uh, withdrew his uh, nomination because uh, uh, Supreme Court decided that we cannot expand the list of ministers endlessly during this uh, election term. And that's why the minister, the ministers that were, it, that when, that, the that that's why the ministers that were nominated right now are ministers that are already holding positions, including Ophir Kunis, which is already a minister, and um, Litzman, who is deputy, Hotel yeah, 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 et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, what, what, I mean, what's it's your irrelevant. Look, yeah. it's, it's all irrelevant. I listened last night mm -hmm. as um, Akunas was interviewed to ask how he's going to deal with the welfare problems in the country. And I was like, really? You're going to ask him that question? Even if he was minister, I mean, he's going to minister for the best case, four months, five months, even if he wasn't holding another portfolio, even if it wasn't an interim government, it's an absurdity. We're in this interim Never Never Land, where the only thing the government really can do is emergency things. It has to make sure the government keeps on going, keeps on moving. On defense, we have there's more latitude, obviously, because defense is something that's ongoing and we need to deal with. But the reality is we're in this situation that no one this country has never been in before. Three elections in a row, no government that's been approved by the parliament, and there's very limited amount of ability that any of these any of these people can do. And we're in a war situation that people aren't realizing, is of course we're now stuck with last year's budget or or one twelfth of the budget. Ago, well, well, it was, it was a two-year budget that was passed two years ago, which was yeah, another yeah. issue, which was a question. But so we were based on last year's budget. No inflation, no anything. Everybody has to get one twelfth of the budget they got the previous year. It's going to be a difficult few months until there's a government in terms of anything the government can actually do. Help, yeah, but I think I, I have to mention something. Okay, yeah. we'll on I, the next topic. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to say that uh, looking at the names that were nominated, you should say something good in favor of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu that decided to nominate people that are in any, um, no matter who you will ask, they are uh, fit to be ministers, yes, they you, are you, people. You picked pick Khotabeli uh, to be the minister of yes, diaspora who's yes, persona non grata yes, yes, in the American yes. Jewish community. You pick Negbi because he wants to get better control, better, more votes in agriculture. I mean, he, there was no more choice. More votes? What's, he, what's he, with he, Negbi he, and, and more votes in agriculture? Come, come on. Look, he, that he, has no basis. He, he has no choice. This he, he has, has no, no, this he, has he, no he, basis. He had no one Hanegbi, else to push. Tzachi Negbi is not a person that is like going everywhere and just praising uh, Bibi Netanyahu. He's not uh, like a blind fan. He's a very, he's one of the most, he's the second most uh, senior in, in, ter in terms of years a uh, uh, member of Knesset that exists, he's a very well equipped right. and qualified p person for this position. All right, With well, all respect gonna... to, to, to all these no. claims, I don't know. Well, we're, well unfortunately, we're going to move on to our second topic, though, but it's good points on both sides. Now, speaking of controversial Knesset members, though, some extreme actors on the left and the right are now under the spotlight, and lawmakers across the spectrum are calling out the extreme right Otsma Yehudit, as well as Arab Israeli MK Hiba Yazbak from the Joint Arab List. So, uh, now, both Otsmai and Yazbak are accused of supporting terrorist acts, albeit on very, very different sides of the spectrum. But let's start with Otsmai. Uh, the party is supported by Kahanist principles, supported by uh, su supposedly racist principles. Why is it that the right, and in particular even the Likud, wants to keep them in the running? But that's not true. It's not true. They're saying they're saying to drop out the ministerial position. You know who's who, you know you know he's for, telling you, you it's know, not a drop out, but I'll give you a ministerial position. Yeah. Okay. He wants the, to vote. Do you have he, any proof for that? He, he wants to look. He wants the votes. Let's be. There's nothing with ideology. He wants the votes. There's no question about that. I'll tell you something. We've been there before with Otsma. Nothing's going to happen with Otsma. We've been through this two, three times. Nothing changed. No, but there may be a difference now with a member of the of the the Bishimam Mishutefet the uh, joint list, because that particular person, okay, we have to go back one step. The 
In all different cases, the Election Commission makes a decision and then it goes to the Supreme Court to approve or disapprove. Until now, the Supreme Court has disapproved every decision the Election Commission has made to limit someone from running, basically except, saying- That's not true. That's not true. Except Last, for the Congress. Except Mich Michael Ben-Ari, right. from Otzma. Right, right, right. So you see, the only ones that are, okay. I'm no supporter of Otzma and the Likud is not, no supporter of Otzma, but let's be frank, the only, the only ones to be uh, um, limited from running by the law the Supreme Court hinted in a very big way last time that they were they would be interested in eliminating this particular young woman from being a Knesset member, but it wasn't requested last time. Basically, is what they said. They said that this, you know, she had done things. She came out with a statement. It was supporting. requested to not, not to enable the entire party. Right. To, to right. So the entire party, they didn't ask specifically for her. Yeah. And she specifically put a post in Facebook before she was a Knesset member saying that a terrorist was a Shaheed. It's not just a terrorist. I, 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 just a second. Wait, no, 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 no. I, I have to say something. I mean, I'm not it's not, no, no, it's, it's not just a terrorist. She was praising a guy that smashed the head of a four-year-old girl in Nahariya in the late 70s. She, she praised him. Praised him knowingly, and afterwards she did not apologize. She just you know, clarified. She said, "I th I see the, the approach towards that as uh, racism of low expectations." Now, so so I, I, th I, so I it, want to agree with you. It is it is as if it is as if the left wing, including blue and white, inclu well, uh, inclu wanna, well, including members of blue and white, it's it's, it's as if the le it's as if the left wing says, "Okay, they are Arabs." They say it, they have to say it for their constituents or whatever. I mean, well, so, come on. But again, okay, okay. so agreeing completely about Samir Kuntal, who is reprehensible, and support of him is reprehensible, agreeing completely, no argument there. However, you have Baruch Goldstein, who committed the Hebron massacre, yeah, who, yeah, but you whose know, image you, is on you know what's the difference? Wall you know, you know what's the Otsma. difference? I'm not supporting Otzma Yudit, and of none course. of us are so supporting Otzma Yudit, whereas no, 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 give them a ministerial position. Okay, okay, okay. Smootridge refused to, look, Smootridge refused to call this him a is terrorist. A, this, I, I have specifically, look, you is he a you terrorist? To, no, he's not a terrorist. You have to let me answer for these lies. I mean, this is a complete lie, and I'll tell you more than that. The only, uh, the, the only two people that have a great interest in spreading this rumor of uh, uh, giving him, offering him a ministerial position are two people. One is Michael Ben-Ari uh, ben uh, himself, Itamak ben, ben Gvir, sorry. Mm. One, is ben, one is Ben Gvir himself that wants, of course, to... Oh, wait, are you, are you, no, 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 you let me, you, you let me speak, oh, please. One is Ben Gvir himself who wants to praise himself to say, here, I'm a saint, I was offered to be a minister, and I refused because I have values. Yada, yada, yada. And the other one that spreads this rumor is Bennett. Okay, are you, are you, are you going to argue the fact that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu didn't try to pressure Bennett to include him in his new party? I mean, there were so many reports. I mean, I wasn't there. I can't say I was there and heard the report. You know, something there were so about many reports, reports about I, that. I, I, I work in this sphere, and I want to say something about Did Netanyahu reports. oppose putting ben Gvir as, as member with, with Bennett? Did he oppose that? Or did he oppose putting him as part of the major party? You began this, this discussion with one um, climax headline, I don't know, <laughs> you, saying, stating that he was offered to be a minister. I'm this not, is a complete that. falsehood, a, a complete lie, and I'll tell you more than that. But was he? Was, was he? I don't know. Me, I don't know which. I don't know which representative by himself go, went and offered what, and on the, under which authorization so, from whom. Okay, I don't know that. So, Mark, I, I look, only look, look at look, facts. Look, look, the reality. Uh, look, I, the, I look the reality facts, is that I, I, I look at terror is uh, terror I, is terror. There is terror on the right. There is terror on the left. We have a problem in this world, not only in this country, in this world of extremism that appears on both, on both sides of the political spectrum, whether it's anti-Semitism, violence, it appears on both sides but, of, the, of the political but, but spectrum. I have, but now, I have a question I, for you, okay? You say both sides. Yeah, it's easiest to say both sides. But why is one side, you know, even if, let's pretend the Likud is lying, okay? Why is the Likud so eager to say, to, to say that they don't want it? Uh, they don't want Otsma, They don't want Benkvir. And on the other hand, if you look at the Labour Party and Merit, they say you should not. Uh, you should let Hiba Azbak be a Knesset member. Well, it's actually splitting. That's what they the, say. That their official. That's their official. It's split. It's split. That's their official, it's split. It's split. That's their official it's split. stance. It's okay, I think we're really uh, you know. 
majority of people would not li would like not like to see her in the Knesset. Majority of Israelis didn't want to see. Their official stance. But wait, excuse me. Wait a second. Didn't let me finish. Yeah. Majority of Israelis would really not like to see her in the Knesset, and I bet you Ahmed Tibi would personally would prefer him not to be in the Knesset uh, either. I don't know. He's made it very clear that he's against all violence against civilians, etc. Well, he's also uh, defended. No, he's never, also okay. defended. Yeah, he was just the accuser. Okay, 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 was responsible. Uh, was responsible uh, for uh, the murder uh, of. Uh, 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 we, more, we signed an agreement with Yasser Arafat, and Netanyahu signed an agreement. Listen, your enemies are your enemies. He didn't and you're sign the agreement. He was forced to buy uh, you, you're, you're, Your enemies are your enemies until they're not your enemies, and sometimes they're always our enemies, but that's irrelevant no. at this point. Uh, the, fact of the, the fact of the matter is, you know, we, we have to balance the, the two requirements. Someone and who the question, smashes the, okay, the, 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 the head the of a four-year-old child I'm not is defending, always no my one's, enemy. No, no, one's no, one's enemy. no one's defending. No one's defending. Final, final comment. We're moving on the, to the third topic. The fact is it's a very difficult balance, to be honest with you. How you defend what is a democracy when freedom of speech is and where that line is and where that line is for someone to be in the Knesset and not in the Knesset is a difficult, is difficult clear, line. But the law yeah. is clear. The law is clear and the uh, Supreme Court repetitively um, ignores the law and uh, uh, and they, they enact the law only towards Jews, and I think it's a shame. I think it's a shame, even though I must emphasize again that, in my opinion, Otsma should not run to the Knesset. Right. Definitely. All right, well, finally, for our third topic, Israelis are sick of the ongoing political stalemate. They're sick of the crippled government, the frozen initiatives, and the billions of shekels being lost to an endless election cycle with no end in sight. So ahead of the third consecutive elections in March, the major parties are starting to change campaign tactics a little bit, and Blue and White for One has a new slogan reading, we have to move forward in reference to ending these nonstop elections. So I'll start with you, Mark. Is this, is this gonna work or are voters pretty much set in their ways? It's so hard to know. Look, the issue here is gonna be turnout. The whole decision on what happens in this election mm -hmm. is gonna be 100% turnout. Turnout on the, turnout in Likud and turnout in people support Blue and White. Are people gonna turn out? We don't know. Last time we assumed it was gonna drop, and it went up. So it went up tremendously amongst the Israeli Arabs and went up a little bit amongst the Israeli Jews. What's going to happen this time? I'm not going to guess, and I don't think anyone can. And Arab wouldn't follow any of the polls, frankly, because all of the polls basically are based on the exact same turnout previously. All their models are based on the same turnout. Mm. And since the election is going to be de determined by turnout, it is impossible to know what this is going to And we could have Vague, vastly different changes. We could have we could have Netanyahu ending up with his 61 votes, or we could have, frankly, Blue and White ending up with 61 votes, because we could have vastly amounts of people not showing up to vote, and we're really not going to know until the day of the election. I generally agree with you, but you know who disagrees with you? Blue and White. I'll tell you why. They think that uh, by their new, um, let's say, sayings or They're statements the slogan, the, sure. uh, with respect to, to the Jordan Valley, they are aiming towards voters of Bennett that are disappointed by Smotrich or whatever, and they are vo uh, aiming for, towards Likud uh, voters. So now, 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 now I, look, look, what we f what, look what we face in the Israeli media. Two small uh, blue and white members, low-key blue and white members, Yoaz Hendel and Zvika Hauser, they're so non-influential there that after the previous elections, Benny Gantz was quoted, I'm not a prime minister because of Yoaz Hendel and I want him out, okay? That was what, that's what uh, he was quoted saying. Now afterwards, look what we, what, look what we see, what, what campaign we're facing. With every day I hear, you has handled here, you has handled there, he even has a, a, a character in Eretz Nederet. What does it say? it says? It says only one thing. It says that they want to brainwash the, the right wing. Look, we are white. Well, so let's, so let's, we are I think I'm a big mistake, Frank. I have to agree with him. I think I'm making a big mistake, frankly. I'm not a great fan of the politics of blue and white. In politics, I don't mean the, their views. Their, their political acume, I think, is all wrong, frankly. They should be working on getting their base enthusiastic and turning out and not trying to get those... I don't know, 20 voters. They might succeed. From, they might succeed, but they, but they might succeed the because they're backed up by the media. Look, you can see it very, very, very widely, especially in Channel 12. I mean, well, what is every it? day you hear, you has handled here, you has handled. Who is he? He's well, just so, a low-key so, so member. So you touched on something actually from the blue and white that they recently mentioned that they'd be willing to annex the Jordan Valley as long as they had some international support. How are and they, they any different hand? from the Likud? Okay, how are they different from the Likud? At this point. Let's, okay, let's, let, let's separate the two out. It's small, but it's real. 
First of all, the biggest thing is Netanyahu. Let's be sure. honest with you. We wouldn't be in elections if Netanyahu had said 12 Would there be a reason to tear, like, vanish if Netanyahu No, they wouldn't. They, the they, they, they wouldn't vanish. Um, look, if you look at the Israeli political spectrum, there are still differences. They're not big, but, for instance, they're against... Um, any act, any single-handed actions, in other words, any sort of agreement in terms of the Jordan Valley or anything else could only come with international consensus. They are mo more concerned about the possibility of Israel becoming a, a single state, dual national, dual national state with a potential... So that means that they want to withdraw no, from they, settlements. No, no, that, that's no, what it means. No, it, no, if it you're concerned... No, it means you want to leave... Yes, all the species... They, 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 all they, all they all want to leave, species, leave, they they leave the option open for an eventual peace. No one in this country, or almost nobody, actually believes yeah. there's peace around the corner. The difference between Likud and Blue and White at this point is Likud is willing to t do things that are uh, one-sided, and as far as Blue and White is concerned, and a lot of people will close the door of a potential peace agreement 20 years in the future or 40 years in the future. Blue and White is saying, wait a second, let's not do anything that closes the options for the future. We don't have a peace partner right now. Maybe we will have in five years, maybe we'll have in 10 years, maybe 30 years. It's not what they say. But the reality is, it's not uh, what they say. that's what they're saying. That's it's the not what they say. Well, so and yeah, and, and I, think, I think one of the problems of Blue and White is that the, the leadership is left wing. They just don't want to be portrayed like that. And that's why they don't speak. Who when, is left wing? When the, bogey, bogey, when, when, is left wing? Not Bogey. Bo, uh, bogey. Uh, and Gantz is bogey, really left wing? Bogey, Come bogey, on. Bogey's charisma is, uh, uh, you know. Negative it, 10, but that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean come on. He, final, he, final so, comments. We have to wrap. We have to wrap. Uh, they are insisting on not saying anything clear about Palestinian state, and it ha they have the reasons. They have right. the reasons. And when we hear low key members there, like Miki Chaimovich or whatever, they speak very different. But they could, because they, they, they believe in the future possibility of a Palestinian state. That's but a, they don't believe uh, there's one that coming now. That's the reality. And most Israelis agree with that. They believe in the future. I believe well, in the future. That is the future of, 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 of a unified <laughs> state, of, 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 of uh, one state. West of the, of the, I'm of so the sorry. Valley. But that is all the time that we have. I'm so sorry. That is all the time that we have left in this week's elections arena. I'd like to thank our guests, Jonathan Oz and Mark Shulman, for coming in. And of course, thanks to all of you for watching. Also remember that for more news from ILTV, please follow us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube. I'm Aaron Porras, see you next time.